You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the interview show. I am here with Amy. Amy, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce your last name unless you <laughs> want to do it yourself. Schmittauer. Schmittauer, okay. It's, you know, not quite as easy as Goldstein. No, you know? it's not. You're right. Exactly. So Amy is the president and CEO of Vlog Boss. Is that the right title? Vlog Boss Studios, yeah. A lot of people like to do that. Like They like to say vlog, like there's a hyphen in there, but there's not. So uh-huh. I just I, I like to just run with it if, if someone says it, I don't mind. But it's Vlog Boss Studios, yeah. Vlog Boss Studios. Mm-hmm. And she also is the face of Sa- Savvy Sexy Social. That's it right. It doesn't really run off the tongue that easily. Yeah, right? no, yeah. But that's, and she says, she's, she's what we would call a YouTube star, oh. starlet, you know. Oh, okay. So check her out on YouTube. You know, they're, they're, they're really fun. She does a lot of jump cuts. And depending on the show, every once in a while, she'll go a little crazy. Like it, every once in a while, every once in a while, she'll go a little nutty and kind of go off on a rant or something like that. Yeah, you know, that's, it's my outlet. You know, I got to take advantage of it when I can. It's fun. It's, it's, always, it's, always, a, it's always good for a good four or five minutes of like, all right, someone else is going crazy for once. Right, right, totally. And, and doing it more eloquently than I do. <laughs> well, it's all, it's, to be fair, it's all in the editing, but thank you. <laughs> I'm sure it's like, oh, crap, I lost my train of thought. Edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I tried to do the jump cuts, and I'm like, oh, it's not worth it. I, yeah. just, it, I just do literally, I'm the, I'm the king of the one take. If it doesn't take, I start over and do it again. It's good. Go with what you're good at. I exactly, like it. Exactly. Exactly. So, Amy, tell us about tell us about you. Who are you? Why do we care? So I am a video content marketing strategist. That's where sort of the blog comes into play. I wanted to let people know how to use social media and video to better get their message out there as a brand and as a brand that cares about what their audience and, and, and their target customer thinks. And so we talk a lot about that on SavvySexySocial.com, uh, specifically about YouTube content strategy, um, what you could be doing to educate your audience and have it be an easier process to be found via search and all that kind of fun stuff. So it makes it fun when I'm delivering my message about marketing through video while getting people excited about making video because people genuinely have a pretty good time learning about this side of their business while watching the channel. So that's always the goal. And of course, you know, Vlog Boss, we um, work with our clients on their video content strategy, whether they're coming to design that plan or maybe they need help in, in part of the process of creating the videos. I even have a client who just refused to be on camera and knew they weren't going to do their brand any justice. And we hired a personality for them. So it's really any point in the process of, of getting your video strategy up and running that we can help with. Oh, okay. So, how long have you been doing these videos for? The, the, oh, let's, let's split this out. How long have you been doing vlogs first? So, yeah, it's. I started working for myself uh, in early 2011, full time. Um, I was doing a little Isn't bit of scary? stuff. It was really scary. <laughs> But that's it's totally when, freaky. Right. That's when the blog started because I knew I was going to need that outlet to let people mm-hmm. know I existed. Um, but I wanted to freelance for a while because I was still really unsure about exactly what I wanted to do in my business. There were things that I was good at and I was sort of trying everything. When you first start working for yourself, you'll take any client that'll give you a check. So Never I, a good idea, but it's true. It's a terrible idea, but that's the, that's the bottom line. So um, that's what I was doing. But I, I am okay with it because it really helped me figure year out that I was going to stand out most by focusing on video content because that's what I have as an upper hand. So in 2012, late 2012, you know, I started my first LLC vlog bus studio so that I could really feel good about the brand I was putting out there instead of just the social media girl. Cause there's so many people out there like that. It's not just about social, but a part of your social funnel, what original content strategy do you have and how is social media supporting it to get that message out there? That's where vlog bus studios came about late 2012 is when it started. So it starts up, Savvy Sexy Social started first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's, uh, all the craziness happened first. And that's then, right. 
And then the seriousness happened later. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're all pretty. They're all pretty not that serious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't be. You can't take yourself too seriously. It depends you know? on how you look at it. But I, yeah, I mean, I, I had to let people know what I was good at, so that they could come to me and help me, even help me figure out what I was an authority in, and it was video. So that's why I didn't feel good about just like starting some social media business when I was really unsure about what my true focus was going to be. I still had some experimenting to do. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how it went. Very cool. So Savvy Sexy Social releases what Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. What made you What made you do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one after the other versus a Wednesday? A, sorry, I'm that's okay. Familiar, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like schedule or a well, Tuesday, I Thursday like, or first of all, I just like wanted to be different. Like Monday, Wednesday, Friday mm -hmm. just sounds cliche to me. Um, but also, I don't like working on the weekends. <laughs> so I mean, I do end oh. up working on the weekends, but I didn't want to have to, you know, get dolled up and in front of the camera on a Sunday so I could publish a Monday video. I knew that I could set aside one day a week for just my business, focus on all my stuff, whether it's just like getting accounting done, con uh, talking with um, my contractors and getting the marketing done. So Mondays are my day for my business. And that's the day that I film all three videos and get them ready for publish the rest of the week so that they go out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I can focus on other parts of the business, mostly client work, um, while that stuff is just sort of on autopilot. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, you also have a podcast. Yeah, I do. That That's what I ended fun. up wanting to do on Friday. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I knew that I wanted to get into the audio space. Um, I didn't really know what format that was going to be because I kept kind of trying things and not loving it. But I've Kind of, kind of found my flow at this point with the marketing lifestyle show. The marketing lifestyle is basically the tagline that we use at Savvy Sexy Social. So that was the natural name of the podcast that came about. Um, and you know, it just gives me an opportunity uh, to build upon the fact that in a YouTube video, you're, you're lucky if you can get someone to pay attention for five minutes. So in a podcast where you can kind of elaborate a little bit more and have more of a conversational um, piece of content with your audience, it, it was just like something I was really dying for an outlet to to do. So yeah, I, I really love it. I think we just published episode 29 today. Exciting, it's not yeah. been around forever, but I, I, it's been so awesome. And I've had such amazing guests just last week while I was at the consumer electronics show. Um, I had a couple of my very smart techy uh, YouTuber friends who have just enormous followings on the platform. We're talking about the number one tech YouTuber in the world, Marquez Brownlee, yeah. um, who's made national news numerous times. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was really cool to just be able to hang out with them. And we're just kind of like bombing around Las Vegas and they're like, Hey, you want a podcast? And it's like, sure. So we just sit down and just have a really casual conversation and they have so much value to share and they're never really in a position to do it that often. Um, that I get so excited to be able to get a hold of it and share it with my audience. So how was CES? I've been tempted to go, but I don't want to get sick. It's <laughs> such a good point. That is such a good point. Literally first time in five years in a row going, I did not come back with the CES plague. It is on. You sound good. You sound I, can, good. I can't believe it. I think I have a little runny nose, but it's acceptable because I live in Ohio and it's cold here. But I, everyone else kind of got like a little cold and I think I got away with it. I, I did a lot of travel at the end of the year. I was in New York, Las Vegas, mm -hmm. came home for the holidays, went back to Las Vegas. So I was just really on top of like my anti back and like vitamins and stuff. So I got really lucky. I didn't get sick this year. Very good point, though. When you're meeting 150,000 people from all over the world who come in for this conference hands, and touching yeah. technology all at the same time, you will get sick. So that's a really good warning for people that go. But it's an amazing experience if you're in the if you're in the tech industry. It's a free event. Um, you just have to prove you're in the industry, and it's an absolute must do at least one time. It's kind of hard to have New Year's resolutions though when the first thing you do at the beginning of the year is go to Las Vegas for CES. But um, that's the only thing I've ever found it, wrong yeah. with it. I, I know my brother. <laughs> law went and he's I mean I'm a journalist I, I mean I'm a trained journalist but um my brother-in-law went out there for CES and he I don't I forget what he did to get in but you know they, they don't really watch it that tightly you know it, it's a, not it's not super strict um you can you can get an industry affiliate badge pretty easily but if you're a journalist and you say that you report on technology in any way having a press badge is extremely valuable on the show floor at CES 
Because people will, like, so the people like attack you, like, oh, I want to talk to you. Yeah, because I mean, like, everybody's badges look different depending on what they are. So if you're oh. a press badge, they look right at you and they're like, come here, we got free product for you, and we want you to see this. And here's our press kit, which comes on like a little jump drive. So they're always oh, trying so you, to keep their jump drives. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I, I love when you go to conferences, you get the swag bags. Yeah, 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 definitely. So where did you go to school? Like, what, what, let's go back farther. Like, like, like what's your background? Like, like, you wanted to do video. You knew that you were going to be good at video. You thought you were going to be good at video. Like, are you, are you, were you a journalism major in school? Where did you go to college? So I, that was never the plan. Um, mm -hmm. It just sort of happened. I went to school for political science, and before I started working for myself, I worked for a lobbyist and fundraiser at a private law firm. And that's what I thought I was going to do, honestly. I went to Ohio State here in Columbus. So you're, you're happy right now? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm very happy, yeah. <laughs> About Ohio State? Ohio State. Which one does – I'm not a sports fan, so go figure. Oh, is that what you meant, though? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ohio yeah. Ohio State just won, right? We just won, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Make sure. Make sure. No, I know. I, mean, I actually need a sports reference. So okay, like, oh, my God. So, well, so, uh, it, it came out of nowhere. I, I don't think I heard it right away. <laughs> okay, no, I was going to make sure because I'm not a sports fan. No, yeah. I'm one of the few guys. My wife's very happy with me that I'm not a sports fan. Oh, that's and, but, I, but it's hard to miss. That. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I heard I was well, say, yeah. Sports. So you're very happy. Seems so. like. Yeah, I mean um, – it was a really, really unexpected road to the national championship, to be completely honest with you. We knew we were going to get there because of our coach, but we had no idea it was going to happen this year with our third string quarterback. I mean, it was just a mind blowing year. So we're very happy. So you went to Ohio State. We'll get off of the sports talk as fast as possible. So I know, I know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I know. A sports guy, so. And my, my brother in law's going to watch this and say, You brought up sports. <laughs> you, only know, you only know the rules of football. I'm like, I kind of do. Yeah. But, um, so you went to Ohio State for political science. You worked with a lobbyist. What gave you the itch to kind of go into media? You know, it was funny. Like, I was already making YouTube video. Um, and I, I had the Schmatastic channel, mm -hmm. just like me, like hanging out with friends, doing fun stuff, just talking to a camera. Cause I loved that side of the internet. I loved seeing these people that were the like OGs of YouTube sharing their life and letting people in. And I thought this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had started doing that and instinctively when you're creating original content online, you're learning how to connect with your audience. You just it just becomes just inherently natural to you uh, once a new social network comes along, how to use it and what, mm -hmm. what to be doing to share more of your content. And it was, it was never really a money-making thing. Um, when I found I was giving people a lot of advice around Facebook and things of that nature at the time, that was the big one. Um, it, it just ended up being something that fell in my lap. People were like, you should do this for a living. And I just was like, what the heck are you talking about? Like, how is that even possible? And that's when I really started learning about how social media was beginning to become this thing that businesses wanted to be a part of. And that's how it happened. It fell in my lap. I thought I was at my dream job doing what I was going to do forever. And suddenly passion showed up at my door and distracted me. Oh, well put. I like that. <laughs> Passion to shut up at your door. Very nice. Well, awesome. Amy, thank you. We finally connected. Yes, I know. Thank you so much for making this happen, even though I've been such a pain to get it scheduled. Uh, you're not a pain. You're just popular. So. Oh, thanks. So where can people find you online? Everything you need to know about me is at SavvySexySocial.com. And if you just forget the order, it's alphabetical. Savvy, sexy, and then social. Oh, I like that. <laughs> there that's you go. Good, that's a good little trick. Well, so thank you, Amy.